Hi. We all know the scripture found in Proverbs that says, he who finds a wife finds a good thing. I'm a little frustrated with this scripture because the emphasis is always on being found when honestly, that's not even the point of the scripture. Today, we're gonna change that and I'm gonna help you become the one in order to find the one. Come on, let's go. So if you are a client of mine, these are questions that I would want you to ask me. And the very first question that I would want you to ask is how do I know that I'm ready for a relationship? The first key to identifying whether or not you're ready is asking yourself the question, am I whole? See, society has taught us that your partner in life is supposed to be your better half. And if that's true, then apart from being found by this person, this would suggest that you aren't whole in and of yourself. And this isn't to throw out the idea of someone bettering us, but we shouldn't be dependent on finding someone in order to complete us. So you come into a relationship seeking to be whole. You come into this relationship seeking to feel complete. But what ends up happening is as you're navigating life, and this person then presents their own set of challenges and life presents its own set of issues, you then will crumble underneath the weight of all these external factors changing while you are still navigating who you are and how to become whole. And see, a lot of people think that marriage is a solution to their problems. But what I want you to know is that marriage is not gonna fix anything. It's simply gonna highlight and present even greater the struggles and the issues that you have going on. And it makes your life and your partner's life a lot more challenging. And now it becomes the person's problem to then try to fix you and help you know your identity. And it just becomes a more toxic relationship because now you're dependent on this person to tell you who you are and how to help you become whole in life. And that's just not good. I just want you guys to know that it is no one's job to keep you happy. Your happiness is your job, even in the context of marriage, even being five years in marriage, it is not my husband's responsibility to keep me happy. My happiness is my job and when you go into a relationship knowing that this person is going to make me happy, they are going to add joy to my life, but at any given point, if I'm not happy and I'm not content with my life, outside of things that my husband can actually control, outside of things that he can actually get better at, like. There is no reason for me to say, well, this isn't working out because you aren't making me happy. No, ma'am, no, sir. That is not anyone's job except for yours. You can make a decision today to become the best version of yourself so that you not only give love that you know you're capable of giving, but you're in a place to actually be able to receive it. And don't worry, I'm not about to give you a spiritual butt whip it and leave you high and dry. I'm about to help you and give you a spiritual butt whooping. <laughs> now the next question that I would want you to ask me is a diamond, how do I emotionally prepare for a relationship? But before I do that, I just wanna throw a little disclaimer out there. I am not a therapist. <laughs> and so if any of these points start to hit home and you decide that you really wanna do some groundwork, in these areas of your life, I would highly suggest you go to a church counselor, maybe even a licensed therapist, and begin to work on these issues a little bit further. And with the question, how do I emotionally prepare? I would ask you, are you emotionally available right now? And this isn't a one size fits all approach, but for the most part, you are probably not going to be emotionally available if you just got out of a long-term relationship or if you just experienced some sort of emotional life altering event. These are usually those moments in life where you've just gone through a breakup or maybe you've just lost a loved one or maybe you just got laid off on a job. And I know sometimes these things happen and we immediately want to like be in a place to like receive love, but these are our most vulnerable and emotional parts of life. And for these reasons, and maybe there are some more out there, but for the majority, this is the time in your life where you shouldn't be seeking to find a relationship. Now this next one is really important. And this is the question of, you can't really ask this, either you have this or you don't, but you need to be self-aware. And this simply means that you know your worth, you know your value, you know what you bring to the table and you are very confident in who you are going into the relationship. You know what you want, you know what you desire, you know what a healthy relationship is supposed to look like and you aren't going to be manipulated or settle when you don't see that. And when you know all of these things, this is going to give you a better chance at making good choices 
in the relationship. So the next thing that I would ask you is, are you able to prioritize a relationship? If you're in the thick of it in a college semester, or if you have a very demanding job, if you're just in some sort of crazy life situation, this is probably not the time that you're gonna be the most emotionally available in order to have a successful relationship. Once again, this is not a one size fits all. I know that things happen, people come out of nowhere. You know, love happens in the craziest of times. And so these are just some ways and some tips that I wanna give you to help you navigate when's a good time to actually get into a relationship. Now, while we're on the topic of preparing emotionally, you may be asking a diamond, how do I overcome some relationship trauma or some trust issues that I have? And what I wanna tell you is that this does not start in your adult life. This does not start when you're a teenager. A lot of times the emotional trauma and the struggles that you have in relationships are directly related to your childhood. And so before I start to talk about some unhealthy attachment styles, I wanna share with you what a healthy attachment style looks like. You're in a relationship and you know how to respond to intimacy. You know how to respond to closeness. You know how to respond to someone who wants to get to know you. I remember there's this guy that I started talking to and I remember going like, okay, so like, tell me about yourself. And he was just like, well, like, what do you like want to know? Like, I really don't open up to people unless like I really like need to. And for me, that was a huge red flag because I didn't ask like his, you know, social security or like, you know, whether or not he wanted like kids or anything crazy. It was just like, tell me about yourself. Like, what do you enjoy about life? And it just was immediately like a no. And I was just like, oh, okay. But I didn't really know what that was. And maybe this person had a little bit of an avoidant attachment style. And this is when people shy away from allowing people to get to know them, allowing people in their space, opening up emotionally. And this is often the result, not having your emotional needs met when you're a child. Now on the other side of the spectrum are people who have an ambivalent attachment style. These are people who are clingy because they fear being abandoned. And this is the result of being abandoned as a child, maybe not physically, but emotionally and not having the stability that you normally would and knowing that someone is gonna be there to take care of you. And so because of this, these type of people push away everyone who tries to get close to them and everyone who tries to get to know them. Now the next most common attachment style is a disorganized attachment style. This can manifest when your parents' job once again was to provide for you, but there was a lot of inconsistency. Maybe you had a father figure who wasn't in the home and he said that he was going to come and sometimes he did and sometimes he didn't. And this now causes you to approach relationships in a very kind of disorganized and inconsistent way. You don't really know if someone's actually going to be there for you the way that they say they are because you've experienced inconsistency in your relationships. And so if you find yourself in relationships where either you see the same type of patterns being manifested or you're attracting people who are manifesting these type of behaviors, I can almost guarantee you that at the core of the problem is one of these attachment styles. And once again, I'm not a therapist, but I have worked with dozens of women who have presented some of these type of behaviors. I've been able to kind of detect themes that have caused these women to not be successful in their relationships. And if you're like a diamond, that is me. This is why I've created my mentorship designed to help women have success in their relationships. And so if that's something that you're interested in, I want you to know this is gonna be a four month live mentoring program. I'm gonna be coming into these sessions where I'm gonna be sharing on topics such as this. And this is gonna present a place for you to ask questions and discover more about how to have success in your relationships. And if that's something that you're interested in, you can check out my website down below, learn more about it, and go ahead and get on the wait list to become a part of this program that's gonna be launching in April. Now let's talk about the spiritual side of things. And I really don't know why I didn't start with this first because honestly, this is the most important. But the last question that I would want you to ask me is a diamond. How do I know that I'm spiritually mature and prepared for a healthy relationship? First question I would ask you is, are you in a place in your relationship with God where someone can come in and compliment you in your relationship in your pursuit of God and not distract you from it? Because we all know those girls in high school who are like, you know, I just need to like focus on my relationship with God. And I respect that. But as an adult, like you need to already have that on lock. This is gonna allow you to have more success in the relationship because you're at a place with God where you're like, it really don't matter hell or high water, like me and God are locked in, like we're good. The next thing that I would tell you 
is to be prayerful about who you're going to date. If the Holy Spirit has told you not to date him, don't date him. Cause we all know what happened when we don't listen to the Holy Spirit. Don't act like you don't, we all know. But here's usually why we don't listen to him because everything on the surface is good. And a lot of times I think that we go to God having our mind already made up and he's like, no, the reason that you're asking me is because I can see things that you can't see. And you know that little thing in the back of your head where it's just like, there's just something that ain't added up. And maybe you don't recognize, but maybe your friends recognize it. Maybe your leaders recognize it. That is often that yellow if not red light from the Holy Spirit, that's like, no, we're not doing this. It's not your gut. It's not like I just have this. No, that is the Holy Spirit. And he's like, no, no means no. A God no means a God yes. Just not right now. You just gotta trust that. Even when you do get that God yes, because in my last video, I talked about how God confirms his will for us through those like divine confirmations. Even when he does do that, you wanna make sure that even in the relationship, you continue to pray. You continue to seek God. Because I know people who are like, all right, God told me like we're doing our thing. And then next thing you know, you're falling into sin because you just like, you forgot about God and you just over here in the relationship that he like blessed you to have and you just like forgot about him. Like don't do that. And this is why it's also so important that you are in a relationship with someone who is going to also lead you and encourage you in your relationship with God. None of the other guys I dated did that. None of them. Eric was the only person who would initiate and who would prompt me to want to be more like God and who would encourage me to spend time with God. And so I know that may not be the case for every guy in every relationship. And that doesn't mean that he's not the right person for you or that he's not a godly man. You may very well be stronger in your pursuit of him, but the person that God has for you, or at least the person that God allows you to be in relationship shouldn't distract you from him. And so with this, I would also encourage you to be very intentional about your personal growth. Don't stop showing up to church, stay in a small group, get around some people who are going to help keep you sharp because the people who are going to keep you sharp are going to go a diamond. Like you've changed, like, and maybe not in a good way. Maybe your attitude isn't that great. Or maybe like you used to be this super bubbly spirit and now you aren't anymore. Whatever the case, you need to be around people who they have permission to call out the good, the bad, and the ugly in your life. And give them this permission before you start dating so that when you start dating, it's not like they're being biased as to who you're dating. It's just like, oh, like maybe I have changed because I wasn't like this this many months ago. Stay in church, read your Bible, listen to podcasts, do all the things to continue to grow and develop. Don't stop those things just because you get in a relationship. And the last thing that I would encourage you is to set healthy boundaries. These are not just physical boundaries. The type of permission that someone has to your mind and to your space that permission shouldn't be the same three months in as it is three years in. And a lot of times in Western Christian culture, we're like, yeah, like parody, blah, blah, blah. No. Everyone wants to talk about that, but no one talks about how to have emotional boundaries. And so what's appropriate in the early dating stage and in the like, oh my gosh, I love you phase to the we're gonna get married phase, that person should not have the same level of permission to your emotional space as they do in the beginning or the end. There should be a distinction between where you are in each phase of the relationship so that you have indicators as to where you guys are going and how healthy the relationship is. As it relates to the physical aspects, if you open up that room, if you give permission to that person in the dating phase, it is gonna create a lot tougher of a scenario for you to actually navigate who this person is. Like we're body to body, but we're not mind to mind. And I love what, I think his name is Tim Ross. He's the pastor or he does that podcast that's um, upset the gram. He says is that red flags then become pink flags. And the things that should be like a huge, like absolutely no, they become, oh my God, that's kind of cute. Next thing you know, you're like, oh my goodness, how did I get in the situation? Why? Because you didn't get to know that person in an emotional way and you opened yourself up too soon physically. It's so important to know the why because we preach this, but women do not know why this is and I am here to tell you the reason so that you can actually go into situations knowing the why behind the what so if you're like girl I struggle with that I could definitely use some assistance in that department I have a whole video dedicated to helping you maintain healthy physical boundaries in the relationship you can go ahead and check that video out right over here y'all can go ahead and y'all can y'all can binge all my videos go ahead <laughs> thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you on the next one bye